there are two basic types of what people describe as legalism. So the two basic types of legalism. And, and I'd like to do the best that I believe that God is anointing me at this stage in my life to share that with you so that we can have a general understanding of what this phrase means and what the scriptures actually say about legalism and specifically I try to to stick to the words of Jesus Christ I didn't it's not a very extensive study because I didn't uh, feel led to devote a whole lot of time to something like this but because it is an issue I, I, I basically I stay with two authors for the most part Jesus Christ I just used his words and then I used a couple things uh, one scripture from Acts and, and another scripture from Galatians uh, as it relates to the other part of this talk now legalism if you go on dictionary.com and I was kind of surprised because the definition that I found on dictionary.com was the exact same definition that the Spirit of the Lord had told me that legalism was moments before I decided to even do this this talk this this, this video and the Lord told me that legalism was somebody or it was the practice of trying to explain or enforce God's Word, trying to explain, trying to enforce God's Word, trying to understand God's Word without the Spirit just from a superficial and a literal view. So it's somebody who doesn't know that all Scripture is inspired by an actual Spirit, the very Spirit of the universe. God, the Creator. So God, as a spiritual being, the spiritual being, spoke to man with man's limited understanding, and men wrote down what they were inspired by God to write or to express on page. Then you have those who are of less understanding, grabbing the writings of these men, and trying to understand what the Spirit was saying through these men. And much of the time, most of these who have tried to do this have failed in doing so. Most of the scholars, especially the more educated, have failed in doing so. And, and I, I, I'd like to get into why that failure has come about, or why that failure has existed. But... Let's just get into this. The definition of legalism, according to dictionary.com, very much like what God had spoken to me directly to my spirit, is strict adherence or the principle of strict adherence to law or prescription, especially to the letter rather than the spirit. That's exactly what God told me. God told me that a legalist was somebody who was judging God's word based on the letter rather than on the spirit. And that's actually what's written on dictionary.com. And so obviously God wants this communicated. And in theology, they have the doctrine, legalism is the doctrine that salvation is gained through good works or the judgment of conduct in terms of adherence to precise laws. Now, Number one, the two types of legalism I've listed are legalism describes someone who's in the state, or legalism is it's viewing the Word of God in a superficial or an external way rather than understanding what the Holy Spirit was truly communicating. So legalism is viewing God's Word from a superficial in an external way instead of understanding by the Spirit what the Spirit was actually 
communicating. Now, some examples of this are John chapter 5, verse 39. Jesus told the Pharisees, he told them to search the scriptures, for in them they think they have eternal life. For in the scriptures, they think they have eternal life. So sometimes people can believe that their knowledge of the scriptures or of various doctrines is equivalent to actually being saved. When in actuality, Jesus says that the scriptures are testifying of him. And so when you search these scriptures, you're actually looking into the heart of a person because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. That's what Jesus said in Matthew 12. So if out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, the word of God that we have is actually revealing the heart of God. And so if you search this without an intention, without an intention to encounter the personhood of the creator of the universe, then you're, you're likely to misunderstand and to misinterpret what the Holy Ghost is saying because you can't privately interpret it. It's not given by any private interpretation. It's, it's not of any private interpretation. Holy men of God, holy men, not just anybody, holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit, according to Second Peter chapter 1. So Jesus tells us that a legalist is somebody who thinks that he has eternal life in the scriptures themselves when the scriptures are actually testifying of a person. Matthew 9, 11 through 13 say this, and when the Pharisees saw it, talking about Jesus eating with publicans or governmental workers and sinners, it's interesting how that scripture and much of the gospels compare people who work with the government and sinners together. I'll let that be understood as it, as it is. So, uh, the Pharisees saw Jesus eating with publicans and sinners, and they asked his disciples, why does your master eat with publicans and sinners? But when Jesus heard that, he said unto them, They that be whole need not a physician, but those that are sick. And so he used what we would consider to be common sense. Uh, they that be whole don't need a physician, but those who are sick. And then he said, But go and learn what this means. I will have mercy, or I prefer mercy, and not sacrifice. So I'd rather you be merciful than you sacrifice a donkey. I'd rather you be merciful than sacrifice a pigeon. I'd rather you be loving than sacrificing a goat or a cow or a lamb. So he says, go and learn what that means. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. For I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And so the Pharisees could not understand. They could not understand why Jesus would actually sit and talk with people who were of the world, who were of the, the external society, the rejected society. Why would Jesus talk with them? Well, obviously because he wanted them to repent. Now, a rebel might use that scripture to validate an ungodly relationship that he ought not have. But Jesus let us know that his meetings with these ungodly people were with purpose. That was to heal them, to bring them to repentance. Now, John 17, verse 16 says, Jesus answered, the Pharisees answered them, because they asked, they said, how did this man know the doctrine, having never learned? Jesus said this in John 7, verse 16, my doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. So he's letting us know right there that the teachings that you and I have are not about just the, 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 the letter, it's about the person who writes the letter through these people who are writing the letter. So in that, we are still focusing on the person of God rather than on just what God says through men on paper. Verse 17 goes on and says, if any man will do his will. Now, this is an extremely important thing that you must not miss. If any man will do his will, he will know the doctrine whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. Listen to the meat of that. He says, if a person is an actual doer of his will, then that person can understand the doctrine. So if a person is not a doer of God's will, 
then that person cannot understand the doctrine. And so when they try to handle the doctrine, they're going to mishandle it, and they're going to abuse others trying to enforce it because they don't do his will. So then they can't understand his word. So a legalist is somebody who is disobedient to the will of God while still trying to handle the word of God. Okay? I hope I articulated that well. So he says that that's how you can know if the teaching is real or not. That's how you can know, by obeying the will of the Father, and then that in turn will help you to understand these scriptures. In John chapter 7, verse 23 to 24, they were upset with Christ because he had healed someone on the Sabbath day. Jesus says this, If a man on the Sabbath day receives circumcision, that the law of Moses should not be broken, are you angry at me because I have made a man every whit whole, or every part whole, on the Sabbath day? And this is the crux of this video. In John 7, 24, it explains legalism, I believe, in the best way. It says, judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. So, judging by the, by the, the letter, rather than, or more than by the spirit, is legalism. But and that's also called, uh, or, is legalism. Judging according to the appearance rather than righteous judgment is legalism. So when you judge by the spirit, it's considered righteous. When you judge according to the flesh or according to the appearance, that's legalism. Now, so uh, the first type of legalism that I've listed here is someone who judges according to the superficial viewing of the teaching rather than by the spirit. Now, the second type of legalism you have here is one who uses the Old Testament to restrict New Testament liberty that's given through Christ. So that's another type of legalism. Somebody who uses or, some, or, or the use of legalism, another type of legalism is the use of the old law, the, according to 2, Timoth 2 Corinthians 3, the abolished law uh, to restrict what's given through the established new law because the old law was completed through the death and resurrection of Christ establishing the new covenant and that's what communion is all about and so when someone tries to use the old covenant to restrict new covenant liberty they're a legalist uh, Matthew let's look at some examples of this in Matthew chapter 12 Jesus explains this in a beautiful way in verse 1 he says at that time Jesus went on the Sabbath day through the corn, and his disciples were hungry. These men were hungry. They weren't trying to break the law. They were hungry. And they began to pluck the ears of corn and to eat. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto him, Behold, your disciples do that which is not lawful to do on the Sabbath day. It's the Sabbath. You can't go out and forage for food. He says, but, uh, verse 3, But he said unto them, Have you not read what David did when he was hungry, and they that were with him, how he entered into the house of God, and did eat the showbread, which is the bread of God's presence, which was not lawful for him to eat, neither for them which were with him, but only for the priests. And so David ate bread that was not legal for him to have. And not only did he eat it as God anointed, he also gave it to those who were with him, because David was in the will of God. And so as long as David was in the will of God, David was going to be consistent with God's law because David was a follower of God. Now, the disciples were followers of God incarnate, Jesus Christ. And so if the Lord is going through this cornfield, allowing these men to pick corn, then it was totally legal for these guys, though it was a Sabbath, because they were hungry to pick corn. So Jesus let them know that these guys shouldn't go hungry just because it's a Sabbath day. That's not sensible. They're followers of me. They're not rebels. They love me. And if they're hungry, they should be able to eat unless I tell them not to eat. And so the Pharisees couldn't comprehend this because they didn't know who the person was. They didn't know who Jesus was in truth. 
They had signs, they had examples, but they were rejecting that. And so they could not understand how it was okay for these men to eat and to get food, or at least to get food for themselves, picking corn and rubbing it in their hands and eating it on the Sabbath day. They couldn't understand that because they couldn't understand the person. So they were trying to use the old law to restrict the liberty that these men now had in Christ, Christ before he died on the cross. In verse 5 of that, Matthew 12, Jesus says, Or have you not read in the law how that on the Sabbath days the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? Meaning, they, uh, And when he says, have you not read in the law, he's not saying, haven't you read that the law says that this is okay? He's saying, haven't you read in the law, meaning uh, what we have revealed from Genesis to, to Deuteronomy? He's saying, don't you know, and, and, and maybe even more than that, because the Lord would lump that together. He called the law and the prophets. And so we know that there are many examples through these prophets that people disobeyed God and were not punished for that, particularly Eli's two sons. And, 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 and they weren't punished for that. And so he's saying that, don't you know that there are people who, throughout this time of the law, were disobedient? and weren't judged. And so he's letting us know that. He's, in verse 6 he says, But I say unto you that in this place is one greater than the temple. So you have the temple that they basically worshipped, and they worshipped the laws, rather than the person who gave the law, rather than the lawgiver. And he's saying, there's somebody among you who's actually greater than the temple itself. Can you imagine such a thing? Well, Christ could, and he wanted them to. Uh, verse, tw verse 7 says, but if you had known what this meant, if you had known what this meant, I will have mercy and not sacrifice, you would not have condemned the guiltless. So legalism is condemning the guiltless. He says in verse 8, and most people, I shouldn't say that, there are a lot of people who are on YouTube, who are out in cyberspace, out in the world, who are still thinking that the Sabbath is a law that you have to keep. Rather than keeping the person and following the person who gives the law, who abolished the law of the Sabbath, particularly among the Gentiles, in himself, in himself he abolished that. Now, uh, and, and they are now saying you're illegal if you don't keep the fourth commandment. There are very popular people on YouTube that are teaching that and preaching that. When Jesus very clearly said that he is Lord even of or over the Sabbath. He said the Sabbath wasn't made as a, a, a thing to be worshipped. He said the Sabbath was made for you to help you out, to help you connect with God and help you rest. He says the Sabbath was made for you. You were not made to keep the Sabbath. He makes that clear. But many people are still enforcing that on people. And then, of course, in Acts 15, verse 1, it says, And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brothers and said, Except you be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved. And so there were those who were restricting salvation to those who kept the old law. There are people today who are doing the same thing. They're saying that you cannot be saved unless you keep the law of Moses. And some people like to say, hey, the law of Moses was the were the laws after the Ten Commandments, but the laws before that were the laws of God. That's nonsense. Every law that Moses gave was coming from God through Moses for these people. Period. The Bible clearly says that on on a variety of occasions. So you not you, you can't separate the two. You can't separate the two. All of that was done away in Christ. All of it was. There are many scriptures that say that there are whole books dedicated to this, but yet people still squabble over it and they'll still be squabbling over it until Christ comes back and sets all things in order. Because people, not everybody has ears to hear. So we have the two types of legalism here. Uh, we have the legalism that's described as viewing God's word in a superficial way by the letter rather than the spirit. That's legalism. And then you have somebody who views the Old Testament uh, as a restriction to New Testament liberty, such as you can't eat that. That's unclean. Even though Paul says in 1 Timothy chapter 4, he says every creature of God is good. And Paul was a, Phar was a Pharisee uh, of Pharisees. He was a, of the strictest sect of Pharisees. 
and uh, and and he preached among the Gentiles, hey, everything is lawful to eat as long as you say thanks for it. And so we understand that that's one type of legalism, using the Old Testament to restrict the new, and the first type is uh, are those who, uh, uh, first type of legalist is a person who doesn't understand the Bible, doesn't obey the truth because he's disobeying the person of truth. But I can't conclude this video without saying that the third type, third type of person uh, that I'd like to discuss here are rebels. Uh, these are outlaws, these are lawless people, um, uh, just people who are disobedient to the Spirit of the Lord and so are free to call people legalists. Hey, you're a legalist because you said I can't tattoo my body. You're a legalist because you said I shouldn't pierce my body up. You're a legalist because you're speaking about things that everybody knows is okay, like sports or like holidays, certain certain holidays, or or like listening to uh, hip hop Christian slash, uh, or or uh, or so many other things, or or certain or involvement in the in the armed forces. Uh, oh, you you should. Oh, you're a legalist because you 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 you're, you're taking the scripture too literally. No, there are those that do that that are legalists, and then there are those who understand the scriptures for what the Spirit is actually saying through them, and who says, hey man, you can't do that. That's, that's sin. You're disobeying the Spirit of the Lord. And it's written here. You should read it and understand that you, what, you're, what you're doing is contrary to the Spirit of the Lord, according to what he said. And to the rebels, John 14, verse 15, says, if you love me, this is Jesus speaking, not Moses, not Elijah, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. So some people like to have this superficial love for God. So you have those who understand the scriptures on a superficial level. And then you have those who understand the, the, the spirit on a superficial level. Because a person who says that you're a legalist is trying to say that he's a person who understands the spirit. While you don't. You don't understand the spirit. When in actuality what's going on is... The, the, the person who's calling you a legalist illegally is somebody who disobeys the Lord and so can't understand the spirit of the Lord and so says, hey, uh, I should be able to smoke weed. The Bible doesn't say you shouldn't smoke weed. You're a legalist. Well, obviously, you don't understand the spirit of the Lord if you believe that you can smoke weed and be in right standing with God. If you believe that you can look at pornography, if you believe that you can participate in a in in a in a an exercise that was solely de solely designed to pit you against somebody else for vain glory, if you think that you can do that without conflicting with the Lord, then obviously you don't understand the spirit of the Lord uh, to that degree. To that degree, I'm not saying that you're condemned to death and you should die and go to hell today. What I'm saying is that what you sow you're going to reap so if you sow strife you're going to reap strife and 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 that will bring a curse on your life it will because if because it, it's it's contrary to the nature of christ the very nature of christ is contradictory to all competition it just really is and, and you might not understand that but i encourage you to pray about that because god will reveal that to you if you genuinely want to know the truth and it doesn't matter who says oh well you know this guy's a christian and he's a uc a ufc fighter this person over here he's a football player he leads Many people to Christian. You can lead somebody to Christ to, to Christ in jail. That doesn't mean that you should become a serial killer and spend life in prison so you can lead people to Christ. We're not going to talk about foolishness here. We're talking about actually loving Jesus and obeying what Jesus is telling us to do as a manifestation of love. So it's not like keep his commandments and that proves you love him. No, it's if you love him, you're going to keep his words. And if you're not keeping his words, it's because you don't love him. It's because you don't love him. In John 14, 23 to 24, he says, Jesus answered and said unto, unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words. And my father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that does not love me will not keep my sayings. So if people are disobedient, tattooing Jesus on their arm, tattooing Jesus on their face, tattooing their little uh, click on their arm for Jesus, they don't love Jesus. They say that they love him. They love him superficially. It's an emotion or some emotional commitment or some psychological ascension. But it's not true. It's not real. Because Jesus says, 
he that loves me not keeps not my sayings, and the word which you hear is not mine, but it's the Father that sent me. So Jesus' words come from an actual entity, that being God, his Father. Mark 4, 18 and 19, it says, And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lusts of other things, entering in, choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. Why did I read that? For the rebels. For those who say, hey, you're being legalistic, when in actuality, they are thorny ground-hearted people. They're people whose hearts have thorns in them. They lust for other things outside of the spirit. So they'll, they're they more than happy to call you a legalist because they lust for other things. And so when you try to prune those things by the spirit and meekness and love of Christ, then they're going to get upset with you and say, hey, you're being a legalist. You're taking everything too literally. You can't do that. I, can, I should be able to do whatever I want to do. In Christ, I'm forgiven. But those are people who are actually deceived by riches. They're deceived by lusts. And it's choking the truth. And they are becoming unfruitful as a result of it. And for those of, and many people who like to use Paul's writings to endorse their rebellion. But in Galatians 5.13, it says, For brothers, you have been called unto liberty. Remember, a type of legalism is somebody who uses the old covenant to restrict new covenant liberty. And Paul right, wrote this whole book of Galatians to help address this. He says, For brothers, you have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for at an occasion to the flesh, but by love, loving first God and then people. You can't love people first in spite of God. And you can't love God in spite of people in the sense that you don't want to sin against man. I'm not saying that you can't love God and that bringing you into uh, division with people because you can't. But just understand that you cannot use your liberty as an occasion to sin and be guiltless. So I pray that this is a blessing to you and I pray that God truly opens up your mind because Jesus lets us know that if you have ears to hear, you're going to hear. There are many who take this word of God in hand and try to explain it and try to break it down. But in actuality, they're not spiritually connected to the Lord. And so they're going to be either legalists or rebels. And then you have those who are obedient to the spirit. God leads them to his word. He explains to them exactly what he wants them to know. And he works the grace in them for them to keep his word. And I pray that that, that, that that be you. I pray that you be among those. So beware of legalism and beware of rebellion.